On this episode of Patriot Games, the Patriot Campers R&D crew swap the solitude of one beach camp for the creature comforts of another. All right, there goes nothing. Engaging low range. But it becomes painfully obvious that getting down onto the beach... Dude, I thought we'd make it heaps further than that. ..was much easier than getting the gear off. But on their way, disaster strikes when Chase's brakes fail and Joe almost loses a wheel. And the whole crew finally make it to the top, one way or another. Sheet metal was my livelihood, but I never thought I'd be building gear like this. Every week, we turn tonnes of steel into rolling works of art. Some of the toughest gear in the world comes out of this factory. Building this gear is only half the fun. No one tests like we do. That's it, mate. Dude, I've got it. My passion has taken my family to the edges of the earth. Life's the game. We know how to play it. Patriot Games. Not the fish here that we were told. Yeah. But who cares? We got to see some crocs, spend the night on the beach. Johnny did drop four. Johnny did drop four fish again. That's what Johnny does. Yeah. All right, boys, let's roll. So I've wanted to do this for so long. Take the Polaris out with X2 on the back. The crew leave camp early, giving them plenty of time to explore before high tide. And the twins have been itching to find out what's inside those beachside caves. Here we go, boys. Here's the caves. Let's have a bit of a look at these ones. Well, I've never heard of crocs living in caves. I've heard of cavemen living in caves. Quiet, guys. Bye, Jesus! <laughs> look at this one, boys. That's, that's like Pirates of the Caribbean. That is really, really cool. We spent a little bit of time looking for them. If I was going to live in these caves, I'd live in this one. Have a look. What's in there? Oh, there we go. There's the bats. Look at them all. Look at all the bats. Boys, come here. Have a look. Yeah. See that, boys? See the bats? Oh, yeah. That's that noise you can hear, right? Yeah. They're pretty cool. They're tiny, huh? I like them. Do you know what type of bats they are? Um... No. Vampire bats. Vampire I've come to suck your blood. <laughs> we spent a little bit of time looking for them, but sure enough, we found them. I've got to show the twins the little bats living up inside the caves. Now, once we hit that point, it had been in the back of my mind for the past two days we were definitely going to struggle getting up the top. All right, boys, here's the plan. We had a hell of a time getting down here. We got bogged on the way through. So I think on the way back up, what we'll do is we'll unhook the tinny off the back of the Polaris chute and we'll tow the Ranger up, get you guys up there first, bring the, you bring the ute back down, then we'll try and get mine up. If we have no luck, at least we've got another Ranger at the top and we can bring, bring that down. Sounds good. Yeah, let's give it a go. Good. Yep, in the sands. All right, I'll drive this. All right, here goes nothing. Need a gear, engaging low range. Dude, I thought we'd make it heaps further than that. We got the 570 a little way up the track, but it just didn't have the power to pull it. We'll go, I'll go disconnect that X2, and we'll get the other Ranger and, and give it a go with that. All right, sweet. So I took the ute back down the bottom, and we decided to get the other Ranger out. And Jamie was definitely all for it. I remember when I hooked it up, the last thing that I said to him was, give it hell. And that's exactly what he did. So 
So once Jamie was at the top, the next person to come up was my old man. So I hooked him up, told him to give it hell as well. Recovery number two. Recovery number two. When we got up to the top, the smile on my old man's face, he had an absolute ball. We had a few dramas with getting the hitch back onto the X2. The whole thing was that clogged up with sand. Once again, the whole team come together. My brothers are very, very mechanical. The whole family's mechanical. It's what we do. And it was time to get that X2 to the top. Give it L, Jamie. We hit that first entry point and the sand's super soft there and I knew that we were going to have a hell of a time getting those things to the top. We were both flat to the boards. We had sand going everywhere. Jamie's Ranger is sliding all over the place with the snatch strap at full extension. You could hear the belts, those motors just peaking. That's what we live for. That was one of those moments that I definitely won't forget from this trip. Now, I wasn't really sure if we were gonna get it in one shot. I was expecting us to get stuck and have to figure out a few different ways of getting up that hill. Surprisingly, hooking the two of them together, we just planted our foots, gave it the beans, and made it all the way to the top. It was a bit of a fun experience. So the past couple of days has just been an absolutely monumental event. You know, I finally got to tow an X2 behind my Polaris Ranger. Now that's something that I've wanted to do for so long. And you know what? It's, it's probably even one of the reasons why I designed the X2 in the first place. So we've really opened up the doors for a lot more a different style of traveling for Patriot campers now. I'm really looking forward to now that I've proved the point that it worked, that we can get into some really, really remote destinations that you wouldn't get a four wheel drive into. Mate, the last couple of days on the beach have been that excellent. I mean, seeing that, that X2 sitting there, pride and glory in the middle of the camp was, was really great to see, you know. I know Justin's wanted that vision for a long time and we made it happen. You know, getting up over that little sandbank that we had to get over to get into that part of the camp, it was great. You know, full noise with the Polaris, dragging it all the way up and getting up the top, it was a great achievement. It was a good feeling once we got everything packed up from the trip down to Usher Point. It was a bit of a rough night on the beach, being that close to the water and the crocs and the salt and no fresh water and not much food. So it was good once we got it all packed up and started heading down towards Loyalty Beach where I knew there'd be a nice hot shower. All right, so that's another little adventure done. We are out. Um, what's the plan? Head up to Loyalty Beach tonight and um, regenerate, get some washing done, have a hot shower. Yeah? Yeah, I think we're going to go um, yeah. Zarafa's Bamaga first for some lattes, and then we're going to go through to Bamaga McDonald's for some good chickens. I'll have mine with cheese, please. Yeah, Roggie, no dramas, we'll do that. We'll see. Um, I'm not sure if the Macca's is open, though. Well, Tommy wants Domino's. How the hell did you know that? I was just about to jump on going, do I have a Domino's? Because I've got you covered, buddy. <laughs> How'd you go on the beach with the X2? Give us a rundown, man. Mate, that, um, that little X2 on the beach, I've been wanting to do that for so long. Yeah, it's pretty cool to see that whole entourage of boats and trailers and getting towed by rangers is pretty epic. Mate, all that Polaris gear come, come in handy, eh? Like, dragging all that stuff up here. It's a lot of work, mate, isn't it? It's a lot of work loading, unloading, towing all this around, but all of that disappears when you get down on the beach and you get in a situation like that, eh? Like, it's one of those moments when you sit down at camp and you're set up, you got palm trees, you're on the water, you got the beach and waves, and all you want to do is sit down and have a beer with your mate, eh? How'd the beers go? Yeah, well, we, um, we kind of had a bit of a situation on the beer front. I've um, 
I was actually really quite disappointed in someone's performance over the past two days. Tommy? Uh, Tom says, sir, me speak no English, me no say no. <laughs> Tommy, everybody has a role, dude. Everyone has a role and a job. There are responsibilities when you're travelling in a convoy like this. As my uh, maths teacher always used to say, you just don't think, Tom, do you? You just don't <laughs> think. After rolling with the boys for a few days in the Super Tour, I decided it's time to hop in the Hilux. Rolling back into town, really looking forward to getting a clean shower, something had to go wrong, and it did. Being as sighted as we were, Chase was definitely giving it a bit. We were travelling down the trail probably a little bit too fast than what we should. Next thing you know, he hits a stick, picks it up, and rips the brake line off. But we didn't know this. Luckily, Chase threw his thumb on the Red Arc brake controller, which braked the trailer. It acted like an anchor and pulled us up before we got around that corner. But, Jamie, can I have that headlamp? What do you need? That headlamp? Yep. What's going on, mate? Oh. So, he's picked up a rock, I think, and he's punctured the um, steel brake line that comes change. off the caliper. Once I got underneath the car and had a look, it was pretty evident what had happened. The brake line had been torn off. Unfortunately, Chase had been on the brakes a bit too much and pumped all the fluid out. We were stuffed. Honestly, there was nothing we could do. I disconnected the brake line from the caliper, bent it over, zip-tied it off, and limped back into home. We didn't want to get any dust into the system, and it was probably the best way of doing it. While the boys were fixing Chase's Hilux, Joe's gone on ahead. But in a rush to make the Jardine River crossing, disaster strikes. Next thing you know, I hear Joe over the radio calling my name. And with the way he was saying my name, I knew I wasn't getting that shower anytime soon. This is why you gotta be prepared out here, boys. So, Joe's left us about two hours ago to drive home. He needed to cross the Jardine Ferry by five o'clock and he's just sheared all the studs off the back of the 200. Now, that might be a major, but yeah. I've got some spare studs. So, yeah. hopefully, if he hasn't ruined the hub, all we need to do is just knock those studs out. We'll put the spare ones and he'll be on his way. The amount of load that he had on that car and with the 730 behind it, the load on the hitch, something surely was going to give. There was really no choice. Now there was no safe way of getting this car off the ground and I knew that I needed the boys' help. We decided then to dig a hole and put a jack underneath the axle and get it up while we waited for Justin to turn up to help us sort this out. That, that, that's the diff. Smack. And I was so proud to see two of my kids just working in harmony, getting the truck all repaired, fixed up, jacked up, back on the road in no time flat. How they did it, I'm intrigued. Jamie and I rolled up, assessed the situation and back into our old tricks. Bang, 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 truck's fixed. Got the wheel back on, rigged up a, a little bit to get him back into town, and we kept on motoring. Luckily from experience, Justin's seen a lot of problems like this happen before, and he was carrying a spare set of wheel studs. It's been a while since anyone's had a hot shower, so Justin's brought the crew to Loyalty Beach, an iconic Cape York destination. You looking forward to a hot shower? Yeah. Yeah? Get some washing done? Yeah. Get these trailers all cleaned up? Yeah. Whilst we were down at Loyalty Beach that night, the State of Origin was on, and the boys decided to go and have a pub meal and watch the game. Now look, Tommy, he's not from this country, so he definitely doesn't really care about State of Origin. Him and I, we cooked up a feed, we had a beer, we recapped over the trip. Mate, crack a day. Oh, mate. mate, great day. How was that? Oh, mate, that whole beach run, X2 down the beach. Oh. Gave me goosebumps seeing that. How was your shower? Oh, Hot shower. So good. It's been like a week. I know. I know. <laughs> everyone smells so clean, mate. We'll have a bit of a feed, get some curry in there, everyone. Yeah. You know, big day tomorrow, mate. We're going to the top. And right to the top. Tip of Australia, mate. You're going to get a photo at that sign tomorrow. Oh, definitely. I haven't been there before. I know. I can tell by the accent. <laughs> good on you, mate. Well, oh, mate. Look awesome. It. Camping at Loyalty Beach provides a welcome break for the boys and a chance to refresh before their last leg to the tip of North Queensland. When we woke up the next morning, it was a completely different feeling to the rest of the trip. You know, everybody was totally regenerated. Amenities, clean clothes, all the washing done. You're on the western side of Queensland. You're looking at the ocean, you're watching the sun set over the water. Now that's something that we don't get back on the east coast. So Loyalty Beach is one of those destinations that you really just have to see.
waking up at Loyalty Beach in the morning is absolutely spectacular. Picturesque, perfect. We decided that it was time to do a little bit of maintenance on the gear. Now the 79's copped a little bit of a hiding, a few mud guards torn off, and little incidental things. But it was a great opportunity, give the truck a wash, get everything clean back inside, have a good look over it, make sure that there wasn't anything that was gonna cause a, a, a bigger problem later on in the trip. It was great actually working with Bobby that day. Jamie was off sorting out uh, Joe's 200, getting that repaired 100% because the boys had to roll out of town that day. Joe had some personal business he had to tend to back at home and the trip was cut short for them. So they've mowed it out of town, we've got all our gear sorted and it was off to the tip. Yeah, that morning was good waking up. There was a bit of excitement with everyone to be able to finally say that we're going to head up to the tip. I mean, it's been a, a bit of a long, hard journey on our way up there. Um, and today it was all going to come to a head. All right, boys, everyone on channel? We are. This is it, 25 k's to go. Another 20 odd minutes, we're going to be at the tip of Australia. It's about time. Dad, you excited to see that sign or what? thought about coming up to the very tip about 20 years ago. Well, you missed that boat, because 20 years ago, this would have been a real adventure. You think about what it's like now. Think about 20 years ago when um, there was no tar and it was hard for to get up here. Yeah, but think how much work it would have been for me to drag all you young blokes up here. Now it's back to front. Yeah, well, you're going to see it soon. Another half an hour, we'll, um, we'll be up there. We'll be up there standing at that time. It's going to be pretty cool. Tommy, you need to get a more comfortable car. We can hear the vibrations in your car over the radio. <laughs> I'll marry your mouth guard. <laughs> Justin decides to stop off with the twins to get a souvenir for his daughter Mia. But he's got something up his sleeve that the twins will never forget. Boys, we've got the croc tent here. We're just going to pull in here and grab um, grab something for Mia. We'll um, we'll see you up there. Me and the twins know where we're going, so we'll just meet you up at the sign, eh? Okay, we'll see you up there. No worries. I suppose the bittersweet feeling kind of came that knowing that once we hit the tip, it was time to turn around and, and head south. And I'll be honest with you, I wasn't ready to go home yet. I wasn't ready for the adventure to end. No dramas, have a bit of a look around. It's pretty cool, we'll meet you there. See you soon. I got them on the radio and I told them that we were gonna pull into the croc hut because the, the twins obviously really wanted to go there and we we're gonna pick up a little souvenir for Mia and, and Sarah when we got back home. We pulled in the front and we kind of hid there, make sure everyone had passed. I turned to the twins and I said, you know what? We've got a tinny on the back. We've got a, we've got a quad bike to get the tinny down to the water. Let's do the top of Australia in a way that we're probably never going to do it ever again. So the plan was devised, it was hatched. Now getting to the tip is a highlight on anybody's trip, but what I really didn't expect was how beautiful the scenery was rolling in there. The rainforest, unbelievable, something that has to be seen. The road from Loyalty Beach to Cape York Peninsula is almost completely enclosed by a rainforest canopy. And the scenic drive is a highlight for Justin's dad, Rob. The drive up there was picture perfect of a rainforest. The canopy over the road, uh, and I mean a dense canopy. I didn't expect it. I expected uh, to be vast and sparse of vegetation. It was magnificent, really, really pretty. While Rob and the boys are getting closer to the top by car, Justin and the twins have other plans. We've walked to the tip before, haven't we? Yeah. So why do we want to walk it again? I'm lazy. <laughs> Me too. And I've got a tinny. <laughs> have you got a tinny? Yes. yes. Let's put the tinny in the water. We hold all this yes. gear up here for a reason. Let's do something different. Yeah, OK. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Cool. As Justin and the twins pull into the sandy headland to launch the tinny, the rest of the crew make their way to the top on foot. You know what Justin's doing? No, not too sure. We'll just head up the top and meet him up there. We walked along the beach and we got to the rocks. Once we got there, I knew we were getting pretty close. I've been looking forward to this since I first got my licence, and to come over that headland and to see the sign down there, I was pretty excited. I know what my brothers are like. They're as impatient as I am. There is no way they were going to wait in that car park for us. There we go, boys. Top of Australia. Let's get this boat off. 
And let's do this to Patriot Camp as well, yeah? Oh, yeah. Let's do it different. Turned to Ashton, told him to unload the gear, and me and the twins, we were on. Got the tinny off, got the outboard off, hooked it up to the quad, and being that it was low tide, we dragged that thing right across the sand. Awesome moment. Both of my boys sitting on the back with me, top of Australia, on a quad bike, with the tinny behind me. Pretty windy and choppy that day. You know, we we're in a three and a half metre boat. Soon as we got out of the, the calm waters of the bay and into that wind that's wrapping around the top of Australia, you know, we hit the chop, wind and surf, spray going everywhere. That was a bit of adventure in itself. But as we motored around and I could just see the edge of the Cape York sign, there they were, all the boys. My dad, my brothers, my closest mates, all standing at the top of Australia and we're rocking up by boat. Now, I know the twins felt pretty cool at that moment. As we were pulling up a little bit closer to the sign and I could see the waves crashing against the rocks, I started kind of thinking to myself, was this the right plan? But there was no choice. We had to get to that sign to get the photo. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. Welcome to the top, Dad. Good on you, mate. Tell me. Mate, good effort. Top of Australia, mate. Well done. Here we go, boys. There it is. Doesn't matter whether you're into that sentimental stuff or not, there's something about being at that sign. There's something about the tip of Australia. You've conquered your own little mission. Having a vision of wanting to do something for such a long time and for a certain reason, it's always eluded me. I just haven't been able to get to the tip of Australia. But not only do it with my son, I do it with four of my boys and two of my grandkids. That moment is etched in my memory that will never ever fade. You are standing at the northernest most point of the Australian continent. Yep. Well done, boys. But you know what? I reckon that's the northernest most point. Yep. And you know what we got? A tinny. We got a tinny. So once we got the photo at the tip and the excitement kind of calmed down, look, it wasn't over for me. I've been to the tip before. I wanted to do something new. I said to the twins, let's get back in the boat. Let's go to the real tip of Australia. So off we went, back in the tinny, and we motored out towards Papua New Guinea. The whole crew are riding high on a sense of achievement. They've made it to the top of Australia. And no one's more excited than Tommy the Englishman. So I'm standing at the tip. I know that's where the destination needed to be, and that's where the team have got to, and I could see everyone on their faces. It was a sigh of relief to get there. You know, it's been a good adventure so far, and uh, it was all about the trip home after that. But the day's getting on, we don't really want to hang out on that side of the coast, eh? Nah. The tide's ripping out, the wind's gusting around yeah. that headland, yeah? Yeah. So look, let's get back. We'll get all this gear loaded up. Let's head south. Let's go to the telly track. Yeah. Yeah, boys. Yeah, boys. Justin and the twins make their way back to shore and regroup with the rest of the team. Now, the twins and I spent a little bit of time exploring around the island, but we were on a tight schedule. We wanted to cross the Jardine Ferry that day so we didn't have to spend another night in civilization. Boys, so we're on our way back south, yeah? yeah. yeah. Tip of Australia by Tinny is done. Oh, yeah. Big tick, yeah? yeah. Is that pretty epic or what? Yeah, it was. What do you reckon your mates at school are going to say when you tell them um, that you went around the tip of Australia in a 3.7 metre CJ Nomad? They won't believe it. They won't believe it, but you know what we've got? we got footage to prove it, dude. That was really, really cool, boys. Once we'd rolled into Bamiga, nobody had really realised how much time we'd spent at the tip. We didn't have much time to make it to the ferry, and it was actually about to close in 15 minutes. Me and Chase decided that we had to get moving. We needed phone reception. I got on the phone, called the ferry. They were really good and decided to hang around 45 minutes for us to turn up. Yeah, boys, here we are. We made it. They're waiting for us. Awesome. Good stuff.
buddy. You are a legend. Thank, thank you very much, mate. Is that the last car? Appreciate it. That's the last car. That's it. So we just got to get him across, and we're done. Thanks, heaps, man. Good on you. We got to meet a lot of exciting people on this trip, and you always do when you're travelling to remote locations. And that's the same for Bamaga. My brother got reception and he called the ferry. He managed to get onto the ferry driver at the Jardine, told him we were going to be about half an hour late. Not a problem. The guy hung around and waited for us to get there. It's pretty cool to know that people with that sense of community spirit still exist. That was cutting them pretty tight, boys, eh? Very close. Good thing we were able to get onto him. Good job on the sat phone there, boys. Um, I'm pretty surprised that he hung around, but good one. All right, so what's the plan for tonight? Where are we headed? Elliot Falls. Elliot Falls it is. We'll go pull up stumps there, yeah? Let's get a feed into us and get prepared for tomorrow. It'd be nice waking up there for a swim. The crew head towards Elliot Falls via the development road but things are a little different after dark. We made the turn off the development road onto the northern end of the OTT. Now, we wanted to get into Elliott Falls, like I said, but one thing that I actually forgot about was that big creek crossing before you hit the entrance. When we pulled up and saw that water crossing, I don't think I even got out of the truck. I just wanted to drive it. So I motored straight through. Through there's no drums. Look at that bow weight. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Wow. Just bouncing, bouncing, yeah. Got through the other side, no problems, but I radioed back to the boys and let them know that it was a little bit deep. Now, being the mule doesn't have a snorkel on it, and we were that far into the trip with nothing going wrong, we thought the safest idea would be to tarp up the front of that car and stop that engine from sucking in water, which could be an absolute catastrophe. All right, we'll tarp it. Who's got a tarp? Oh, yeah. So why do you tarp the front end of the car? Well, what we're trying to do is stop the water getting in the engine bay. By tarping it up and blocking off the front, what we effectively do is create a bow wave. And that wave pushes all the water away from the front of the car. Can't go too fast, you just have to plot along and get the job done. Watch fingers. That's it. That's it. With Jamie guiding him, Tommy makes his way slowly through the deep water. Going yeah, just go through real slow. Just cut it through. Sure enough, we got the boys across one after the other and motored into camp. We're good to go. Job done. Really hungry. Rolling into camp that night, it's like we were back. We were all back together. The luxuries of the night before at Loyalty Beach were nice, but that's not what I come up here for. I felt back at home. We're living back out of the camper trailers. We all pulled up in a real tight group, because that's all the campsites at Elliott Falls really allow for. Opened up all the kitchens, and our family got to doing what we do best, and that's cooking a meal. Camp oven and all the food. Got into camp that night and we put all the camper trailers facing each other. Everyone grabbed whatever it was they had in their fridge at the time. We had a nice big cook up that night. I was cooking a pasta dish out of the toy hauler. I had Chase right in front of me on the Weber out of the front of Dad's X1. Dad on the back on pots and pans cooking up some concoction and we put on an epic spread. That's funny. <laughs> Don't get dirty, Dad'll get upset. It's like heaven in a meal. Let's eat, boys. Now, during dinner, all you could hear in the background was that, that gush of the waterfalls. You could hear it constantly in the background. So as soon as we finished up, we'd done a quick wash up and everybody straight down to the falls. Oh my God, I feel brand new. It was good to get into refreshing water where we could have a really good swim. Oh my God, 
Now, what really surprised me was just how difficult it was to swim in that water. The water was really, really thick. It took it out of you after a couple of strokes. I had one of the underwater torches there. Me and the kids were popping underneath, looking underneath the caves and underneath the, the rock formations inside the water. It was a pretty cool moment. With their goal achieved, everyone has shifted into holiday mode. But there's still one more epic adventure to be had. But I've saved the best till last. Tomorrow we hit the old telegraph track. The adventure ain't over yet. It's morning at Twin Falls, and the Patriot Campers R&D crew are on their way back from their trip to the top of Australia, Cape York. Waking up at Twin Falls on this morning was a real kind of surreal feeling. We are on the old telegraph track. It's a four-wheel drive mecca destination for anybody who's into adventuring in Australia. We had a quick brekkie, I grabbed the twins and the rest of the crew, and we headed down to, ironically, Twin Falls. Do you reckon it could be named after you, Tuck? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. You been here before? Uh, yeah. yeah. I don't think we come here last time we were up here. It's going to be good to have a nice swim. Yeah. Now, I don't know if the boys were being serious or not, but I think they were kind of convinced that Twin Falls were actually named after them. So here it is, boys. Twin Falls. You know why it's called Twin Falls? Because there's two of them? Yeah? That's pretty cool, huh? Want to go up there and have a look? You want to go for a swim? Yeah. There's nothing better than starting the day with a swim in a natural waterfall. I've seen Dad up there, underneath one of those cascades. He must have been up there for at least sort of half an hour. You, you couldn't get him away. It seemed like I was in a hydro bath. So relaxing. Natural water, crystal clear, in the middle of nowhere. And I'm talking really at the tip of Australia, in the middle of nowhere. I didn't even know he actually existed. Well, I knew it was there, but I didn't realise it existed. It was so pristine. I hope we kept a secret for the rest of the world to keep to ourselves. The morning was absolutely beautiful. I love going for a swim first thing when I wake up, especially after sleeping in my swag. So getting up, grabbing the twins and running down to those falls was just awesome. The boys were having an absolute ball. Everybody was involved and we really didn't want to leave. The group have really bonded over this trip of a lifetime. Mates have become brothers and brothers have become mates. Now, I heard Chase yell out from somewhere around the corner, come and have a look at this. So all of us boys walked around this little headland and there was a massive rock pool with a, with a nice little cliff jump there. The twins, straight away, before I could even get up to the edge of it, they were in. We spent probably an hour there jumping up and down off the waterfall, having a laugh, having a good play around. It was kind of funny to see my old man a little bit nervous, but there's no way that he was going to be left standing at the top. So he was straight in there with us as well. I came out of this beautiful, relaxing waterfall episode. We're walking around the corner, we're on a cliff face. Everyone decides to jump in. My boys obviously jump in. I'm not as young as I used to be. My grandkids are in the water saying, come on, come on, jump in. And I'm sort of a little hesitant a little bit. Well, I did it and it was so much fun. I'm so glad. The landscape changes so much up in Cape York. Like it, it, the, the diversity of that country is, it's just unbelievable. And if you look through the places that, that we've been, you know, we've been on the ocean, we've been on white beaches, we've been in the reddest dirt that you've ever seen, thick mud pits, salt pans, mangroves, and then now to be in a freshwater stream in the middle of absolutely nowhere. It's just unbelievable country.
Back on the road, the boys are preparing for the toughest part of the trip, the southern end of the telly track. The telegraph track isn't completely isolated and from time to time you'll bump into a few adventurers and touring four-wheel drives. But I don't think Justin and the crew ever expected to come across this. As I pulled up to the crossing, I've seen an absolute monster in the distance. Now I could see a truck from about 300 metres away sitting on the biggest set of tyres that I've ever seen. I watched this patrol come across. You could hear the rumble coming out of this thing, sitting on 40-inch tyres, and a guy sitting on the wrong side of the road, left-hand drive. It was actually a couple that were travelling from Denmark. They were doing a big lap around Australia. Hey, guys, how you going? I'm good. How Justin, you? nice to meet you. How you doing? Where are you guys from? This isn't an Australian number plate. Nah, this is from Denmark. Denmark, yeah. what are you doing all the way up here? Left hand driving <laughs> some sort of monster that resembles a patrol. Um, yeah, just because you got that nice all wheel drive trucks down here in Australia and Yeah. Yeah, it's just big industry down here and yeah. so we've been playing this trip for two years now. He was in a Nissan patrol with a 5.9 Cummins in it, twin transfer cases and 40 inch tires. Now that's the way to really do, Kate, you Good luck on your trip, eh? Yeah. We'll Thank keep you very moving. Much. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Nice See you later. While the southern end of the old telegraph track isn't as challenging as the northern end, it's still filled with tricky water crossings and tracks. Hopefully they don't get stuck in here, because that would suck. That would not be cool, would it? 70 just eats this stuff, eh? Yeah, Go the big 70. Nothing this truck can't do. On that morning, it was really nice to see the different mix of people that were travelling down the OTT. Now, we saw families in new Land Cruisers to the guys in the big jacked up patrols. There's something up here for everybody, and there's really a way for anyone to do it. Fruit Bat Falls is a destination that absolutely blew me away the first time that I came up to Cape York. So there was no way that I was gonna drive past it and not let the other boys have the same experience. The scenery of that massive wide open waterfall collecting into a narrow channel is like nothing else that you'll ever see anywhere else. The falls weren't really something I thought of, but to sit in that water and relax, it was pretty nice. But at least the boys can now say firsthand they know what Fruit Bat Falls is all about. The other excitement for that morning was knowing that we're actually finally going to do the telly track. It's something I've obviously seen a lot of, read a lot about and, and heard a lot about. To actually go out there and do it ourselves was something that we were really looking forward to. A little bit nervous to, to rip the front or rear bar off my car as obviously, as you can see, it's still quite standard. All right, boys, here we are, the southern end of the telly track. Now's where the uh, interesting part begins. For a while. Yeah, I don't know what it's like coming. Um, this is the first time I've done it heading south. I've always done it um, heading north, the, the normal way that everyone does it. So this will be interesting. I'm curious to see how that toy holder goes. Hey boys, there's a rule to the telly track too, eh? Hey? You all know it. What's that? No chicken track. You gotta drive the track. That'll be fun going up, gunshot with that trailer. Gunshots may be the only exception. No exceptions. Yep, no exceptions. You're going up and gunshot. I don't think the big toy hauler's going up gunshot. We'll see. <laughs> Next time on Patriot Games, the Patriot Campers R&D trip is coming to an end. This is the backside of Gunshot Creek, boys, so we're just going to drop down into here. But not before the treacherous old telegraph track takes its toll on Chase. Bobby. Am I going to hit on that side, Chase? Am my wheel straight now? How's that straight? My wheel alignment's out. Jamie. We're going to go to that one on the left behind that big one. Half turn out once you've done the shackle. All right, it's on you now. And Justin. I do not want to see that hook come through the front window. Don't know how I'll explain that one to Sarah. That's it. 
Yeah. <laughs>